Hey everybody. We are in the bamboo garden, as you can probably see behind me. But I wanted to talk about a non-bamboo plant, this fig right in front of me, or actually all around me. This is Ficus damaropsis. It's a really wonderful, fairly tropical species actually. It comes from the highlands of New Guinea. And one of the common names for this plant is dinner plate fig because the leaves are individually so large that you could put a whole feast on one of these things. Another interesting aspect of this species is that these are very young and immature fruits, but these are figs. And this species actually grows to have fruits that get to be giant, the biggest figs out of any species in the whole world. And it just so happens that this wonderful exposure so close to the coast with a little bit of slope that lets cold air move past us in the winter gives these plants just enough buffer in temperature for them to actually do okay throughout our winters. Uh, this is a plant that does need some supplemental water if you're gonna put it into your landscape and they like a rich soil substrate. So bamboo also needs rich soil and some supplemental water, which is part of why these plants coexist so nicely. Um, they're a little bit tricky to propagate, which is unusual for ficus. So figs tend to be so easy to root from cuttings that you can just rip a piece off stick it into the ground and you have a new tree. Other ficus don't work that way. And ficus damaropsis actually has a hollow stem, which makes it really prone to rot as cuttings. And we've had mixed success, actually cutting pieces off of this, putting them into our nursery and getting them to root in a nursery setting. So I wanted to show you a different type of clonal or asexual propagation technique today that's called air layering. It's also sometimes called marcotting. And it's a really interesting way to propagate a plant if you don't have good success from traditional cuttings or if there are very few cuttings to take from. If there are not opportune cuttings all over the plant, this is one way to get the most bang for your buck per piece, essentially. If you look at this stem, there's some old leaf scars from where previous leaves came off. And then there's these lines that are the nodes. In the video that I showed you all about propagating salvia from cuttings, I noticed, noted that you have to have a node at the bottom of your cutting in order for those to root successfully. Ficus is a little bit different because not only do we have these nodes, as you can see, but if you were here close, you can see all of these little, what look like kind of pock marks along the stem also. And each of those is another site that can become roots. So ficus has a lot of opportunity to set roots. But like I mentioned, if I cut this thing off and bring it into our nursery, more likely than not, it's gonna rot, which is not what I'm after. So let me show you how to actually propagate a piece of the plant while it's still on the mother plant. Some of the advantages to this kind of technique are that cutting itself doesn't leave the mother plant until it's already rooted. So I'm gonna actually remove the living cambium, which means that all of the material that's created through photosynthesis up here in the leaves that usually would go down toward the roots is actually gonna get stuck at this spot where we want it to set roots. And as, that, as those hormones and sugars and other chemicals kind of concentrate at the end of this wound that I'm about to make, it actually promotes rooting and it's gonna root into space and then we'll cut that whole thing off months down the road. So let me get into this and show you what I'm talking about. The first thing that we have to do is to pick a spot where we're gonna actually cut off all of the bark. And this is an important thing to note for people who are sensitive to latex that this species does produce a lot of latex and that's all the stuff that's dripping out all of this white sap. So I've actually girdled this trunk now. And the next step, it's important not to cut yourself in the process, is for me to remove all of that outer living material. Right here, we have bark, and then there's this kind of green zone in between the bark and the inner cambium, the kind of woodier part of the tissue. And that green layer is actually the vascular system of this plant. So all of the sort of circulatory processes actually move through this 
immediate marginal layer, and I'm removing all of that from this spot. You can be fairly aggressive about this because part of the idea here is that I do not want this branch to be able to effectively heal back over this wound. Make sure you have all of that cambium off. And yeah, I even like to just kind of rough it up a bit to make sure that this is not gonna heal well. If we let this tree do its thing and I don't make a dramatic enough cut, then what happens is that this piece will actually grow back and heal in connection with the main part of the plant again. And it will be scarred, but it'll be as though I never made any cut in the first place. We want roots here. And so the next step then is to actually create a something, a substrate for those roots to grow into. And I wanna point out before I cover this all up that the part that is still intact here is where the water moves from the roots up to the leaves. So one of the best things about this, this technique for propagation is that this giant leaf out here is still sending out water all the time, especially when it's hot and plants are really responsive um, putting out a lot of respiratory processes. This one will wilt immediately if I take this cutting. We would actually have to remove all of these leaves, which is part of what slows down the rooting process and makes them so difficult to propagate from traditional cuttings. Instead, because this still has a water connection to the main plant itself, this is still gonna be getting water for the duration of the time that it starts to set roots. Let me show you the next step here is to actually give this thing something to create a root ball into. In order to effectively get roots, I do like to use a little bit of rooting hormone. This is a synthetic auxin, which the plants do produce themselves. And that's one of the things that accumulates here since it has no way to get back into the main trunk of the plant. But it really can't hurt to give it a little bit of a boost. And so I'm putting some Hormadin on here with just an old toothbrush. And since the stem is actually sappy, it sticks fairly well. That's just a little bit of an assurance factor. You don't have to do this, but this is a fairly difficult to root species and I wanna give ourselves the best chances of success. Now, this is gonna be essentially our root zone or our pot or a container for this cutting now that's still on the plant to actually root into. I like this way of doing it. You can wrap this thing and then tie it up yourself, but I've found this a pretty easy way to go about this to just put hydrated sphagnum moss into a bag. And then what I'll do is to cut a big slit in it and it does help to squeeze it out. It's like a big sponge. And that's the point is that this will hold moisture for a long time, but there's also a lot of air in there. Now, to actually create our layer. I wanna reiterate what I'm doing here. This is a cutting still attached only when it comes to water transport. And instead, now all of this photosynthetic production, all of the hormones that come from the leaves and go back into the main part of the plant, are gonna get stuck right here. And I've also added some additional rooting hormone just to be safe about this. What we're gonna see here is that in time, and this can take months, with some of the woodier, more difficult to root species, this can actually take years. So we'll have to come back and check on it every so often just to make sure that the moss is not drying out too much. But what you'll see, we'll come back and look at this in another video, is that this thing will actually start to grow roots first up here, and then they'll grow all the way through here as though this is a big nursery container. Only once this bag is actually filled with roots will we cut this piece off of the main plant. And at that time, it's not really just a cutting, but a rooted cutting or even a plant. It'll have leaves, it'll have roots, some nice stem to it, and we will have made a rare ficus species from our collection, that much less rare, that much more safeguarded and in time even available to people who wanna purchase these plants from us. I'm gonna um, 
fast forward through some of the next steps because they're fairly straightforward and I don't wanna to waste too much of your time here. But what we have to do at this point is to wrap this thing. I have some just natural twine here just to secure it. This is just to make sure that our bag doesn't fall off or slip down. We want it to sit right where I made that wound. So I will come back and refine this a bit off camera, but that's the basic idea here, is that in time, this will be a full root ball, still on the mother plant, and we won't bother to even make the risk of cutting this thing off until it's a pretty well established plant. From there, this goes into a nursery container. We'll grow it up to probably 15 gallon size before either planting it somewhere else in our landscape or maybe, like I say, making it available to all of you. And there's one last step that I like to incorporate into this, which is to actually wrap the entire thing in foil. And the reasoning behind this is I want to exclude light. Roots tend to grow a bit better in the dark. And I'll come back through and rewrap this and put a label on it with the date. But here we have a dark space where roots can grow, a substrate in there that's favorable for them to grow into and it holds moisture as well as air for a long time. And not only does this exclude light, it actually reflects a little bit of the solar radiation and keeps things a little bit cooler as well. So we'll come back to this in, I'd say, five months, and we'll have a whole plant actually growing on another plant. Only then will we make this separate individual and figure out what to do with it from there.